Sub-Zero, custom combo tips and tricks. What's up guys, Blitz here today bringing you another video, and today we're going to be talking about Sub-Zero. In MK11 you can customize your character loadouts based on the provided move selection. This makes every character even more unique and more fun to experiment with. Now in ranked mode you're limited to preset tournament variations, and I'm not going to lie, I'm not a fan of either of them for Sub-Zero. We will be talking about those in this video, but my main focus are two of what I believe are his most powerful moves that you can equip. I've had the game for about a week now and I took forever to put this video together, but after experimenting with other special moves for Sub-Zero, I feel like this is the combination that makes this character high tier. With this custom loadout, we gain access to resets, more mid-screen combos, crazy corner carries, high pressure, and corner combos. Now of course, it's up to you as a player to master these moves and use them to its full potential, and that's what I'm going to try to do today and help you guys get started. This is my custom loadout for Sub-Zero. It consists of two special moves, Ground Freeze and Rising Ice. Ground Freeze is an ability, it takes up two entire slots, and Rising Ice takes up only one. It may seem like right away we're limiting ourselves at first, but trust me, we're not. The tournament loadout Dead Winner gives a faster ice ball at the cost of one meter and replaces our low slide with a shoulder charge. The other loadout, Thin Ice, gives us more zoning capabilities, which I'm not a direct fan of. Now these three combo strings are Sub-Zero's fastest punish strings. The first two hits on all three of these can actually be special cancelled, meaning you can cancel the first two inputs and then throw out an ice ball or a slide. Now here we have the training dummy set to block and when we hit them they will cancel it into a teleport. Using this will allow us to practice what moves we can use to actually punish them if we block their attack. This can also be used to study any other move, not just special moves. Permafrost is one of our best combo starters because the first move to come out is a low attack. However, out of these three, it is the slowest move to start up, so against most attacks you probably want to use Cold Encounter or New Threat to punish since they both are faster. The issue is, those two moves, the first hit is a high meaning your opponent can duck it. But if you're punishing their attack, it should land just fine. And again, don't forget, you can actually cancel the first two hits into an Ice Ball or any other special move. NRS does their best to give us all the information that we need, so if you go to the move list, you can actually see the frame data for your moves. As you can see here, the back three beginner of Permafrost is actually 13 frames, whereas the first hit of Cold Encounter and New Threat both are 8 frames, which is much more faster to use as a punish. So basically what this means is that there are certain unsafe moves your opponent can use, and they may recover quick enough to where Permafrost cannot punish them, and they can go back into blocking. Whereas Cold Encounter and New Threat may connect and be able to punish them a lot quicker. It's just in this scenario, Noob Cybot's Teleport has such a long end lag that if you block it, you can punish it with Permafrost just fine. I encourage all you guys to utilize Training Mode to its full potential and figure out just what you can do if your opponent keeps spamming certain moves that you don't know how to counter. Icy Grave has an incredible range which can reach your opponent from the start of a fight. Frozen Over is the same move, but it ends with a kick, knocking your opponent away. The good thing is both moves are actually special cancelable, but I don't recommend using this too much outside of combos. Now it's very good for whiff punishing your opponent from a distance or spacing combos out from the first hit, but the first hit of the combo is actually 14 frames, which is very very slow, and this move should never be used to punish opponents. I would recommend you use this in mid-screen combos, and then follow up with a slide special for maximum damage. You can cancel the first two hits of this combo into Ice Ball, which is mainly used for whiff punishing your opponent's misspaced moves from mid-screen. Now here is a fairly easy bread and butter combo I use with Sub-Zero. This can actually work both mid-screen or in the corner, and also you don't have to meter burn to slide at the end if you don't want to. You can actually save some meter for another combo. I just chose to do it just to do it just so I can show you guys how much damage it does. The tricky part to this combo is that after you use Rising Ice, you have to wait for your opponent to fall a bit lower to the ground before connecting your back one starter into Frozen Over. If they're too high in the air, then the slide right after is going to go right underneath them. One of my favorite moves in Sub-Zero's entire kit is Forward 2 Double Axe Slam. Although it is a slow startup, the range on this move is insane, and not to mention it is an overhead attack. This attack is special cancelable, but a regular Ice Ball is too slow to connect in time for a combo. That will work just fine in the Dead Winner Tournament variation, because you can actually meter burn the Ice Ball to be a little bit quicker. However, Rising Ice, which we have equipped right now, can actually connect immediately with this move and combos just fine with the both regular and the meter burn version. This gives Sub-Zero both low and overhead combo starters, which is super viable in this game. And now we're going to talk about Crushing Blows, which are actually new to Mortal Kombat and gives players a sort of strategy when it comes to the matchup game plan. Crushing Blows require prerequisites to be fulfilled in the game before they can be executed. And once one is used, that one is actually gone for the rest of the match regardless of what round you use it in. The move list menu actually tells you what is required to execute these Crushing Blows mid-game. Now everyone has a down 2 uppercut Crushing Blow which triggers if you're punishing your opponent's attack or counter hitting them. Other than that, everyone else has a unique route that they must follow to execute them. My favorite one of Sub-Zero's is that if you land his slide, meter burn two times, then the animation will trigger on the third time that you land and enhance the slide attack. 
This does massive, massive damage and can be used to end combos, which is even crazier. When you land your down two uppercut crushing blow, you're actually able to combo your opponent, whereas when you do a normal uppercut, you cannot. For me, as a strategy for Sub-Zero, I try to get my two enhanced slides in the game early and save that crushing blow for moments like this for crazy damage. If you use final draw, which is forward 2 4 as a punish or counter hit, you can actually crush and blow for big damage, but unfortunately, it does not create a pop up for following up combos. Cold Encounter's crushing blow only triggers if it's used at the end of a combo ending with either 8 or more hits. I mainly use this one in the corner off of juggles, but it's possible to actually do this one mid screen, it's just a little bit tricky on the timing. Once you get your opponent up at the right height, you have to whip the second hit entirely, and the final hit will connect just fine. So this is actually a bonus clip on getting two crushing blows, sort of, from a reset. We actually have the dummy set to wake up attack after a knockdown, so after we land the cold encounter crushing blow, if your opponent is spamming a wake up attack and then your forward two circle combo hits, it actually will interrupt and give you a nasty crushing blow for big damage altogether. And now we finally reached the most important part of this video. I'm going to show you guys the proper way to use ground ice. By itself, ground ice is a very slow startup move, however, it can be enhanced to start up quicker and travel full screen. The issue with this is that it turns it into a low. Now that wouldn't really seem like a problem normally, but if you look carefully at the regular, non-enhanced version of ground ice, it is in fact a unblockable attack. And right here, we're actually going to set the dummy to crouch block, which should block all low attacks. And as you can see here, the regular ground heist is in fact an unblockable. Enhancing it makes it a bit quicker, but turns it into a blockable low attack. It's honestly great that it can go full screen if you enhance it, but I do not recommend doing that that often. Just stick to an up close pressure heavy offense using the regular one. It's very clear to see that ground ice is a very, very slow startup move, but there is a move in Sub-Zero's toolkit that allows him to set up ground ice very safely and almost foolproof. And that is right. Rising Axe. Rising Axe is a great forward moving anti-air attack that covers actually a lot of range, which is another option instead of Sub-Zero's down two, but if we go back to the move list and check out the frame data, we'll see that on hit, we actually have an advantage of 39 frames on our opponent, and Rising Axe is special cancelable at 17 frames. So if we immediately throw out Ground Ice, after landing Rising Axe, we can actually get some sick setups into some big damage. I want to let you guys know that actually Ground Ice does not combo your opponent. However, it does put them in a restand position where they now have to guess to block either overhead or low. And now thanks to Rising Ice, Sub-Zero can actually combo off of his forward 2 overhead into a juggle. Or he can go back into back 3-2 low into another Ice Ball to refreeze and set up another Ground Ice after landing back to Rising Axe. This is insane. Doing this will put your opponent in a position to now where they have to guess overhead or low after ground ice. This reset can lead to insane damage push and move momentum almost instantly into your favor, especially if you can keep making the right guess. It's a very, very strong combination of moves for Sub-Zero. I can only hope that Ground Ice can one day make it into a tournament variation. I mean, NRS did say that they will be adding more variations into the mix in the future, so fingers crossed for Sub-Zero. This reset right here I'm showing actually costs about two bars and has massive corner carry. If you can keep making the right guesses and end it with a crushing blow, you can take an early first round and keep your opponent in the corner with this. Resets are all about ending your combos early in order to inflict more unscaled damage rather than continuing a long 14 hit combo. Now to demonstrate its effectiveness, we're actually going to set the dummy to try to escape with forward and backward rolls, and as long as you cancel ground freeze immediately after rising axe, which is back two, it will keep them in place and use up their defense bar. It's really messed up. The computer is trying to roll out of there, but as soon as their character stands up, they are trapped and locked in for another reset. And this is the case for both forward and backward rolls. You know, it's kind of funny because in the past Mortal Kombat games, I never used ground ice. I always just thought it was a waste of time. And honestly, I prefer to be as rushdown heavy as possible. But now since this new Mortal Kombat's a bit slower, we need to take all the damage and setups that we can get. Right here, I actually set the opponent to wake up attack with one or two, which is actually the wake up punch. And even that gets stuffed by ground ice. And I gotta admit, while it was looking pretty good, it actually can be broken out of if the opponent wakes up with either the three or four kick wake up attacks. It ignores the ice underneath them and actually connects against us if we have them in the corner. It's great to see that this option isn't completely broken, however the kick wake up attack does not work against ground ice while mid screen. Now they won't get trapped in the ice, but they still can be free, however their attack will not connect with us. Meaning we can actually punish this option. And finally, we're going to set the dummy to break away out of Rising Axe to see if they can avoid the ground ice. The problem is, is that since they land back on the ground, they will get stuck in ground ice and have used two bars of their defensive meter and pretty much are shit out of luck at that point. So far, the only true way to get out of this is using the wake up attack kick using up three or up four. 
Before we get into the tournament variations, I actually want to mention one more attack that can actually be very good for Sub-Zero. It's actually his forward 4 Brutal Kick. It's a sprinting kick with good range and also is plus 4 on block, meaning it's safe. And that also means that you can act out 4 frames earlier than your opponent if they block this. So normally what I like to do is land this on block and go for a down 1 punch to interrupt your opponent trying to counterattack, and then going for a free grab. In Mortal Kombat 11, we have new super attacks called Fatal Blows. These replace x-ray moves from previous games and does not use up our special moves bar. Instead, it is tied to our health and can be activated once we reach 30% left or under. This change makes it so that every match will almost feature a Fatal Blow, because in previous games, it wasn't really wise to use them because you can actually get more damage just by extending combos and using your special moves bar for that instead of your x-ray attack, which actually use your entire bar. Here are some combos that I put together for you guys to confirm into your Fatal Blows. One tip that is really important to know is that when you input the final button before your Fatal Blow, you need to immediately press the left and right triggers to activate and combo it. Look at it as if you're special canceling the Fatal Blow into your combos. Because if you don't do this, it won't come out as soon as it needs to and you more than likely will miss your opportunity and drop the combo. This can honestly be used as an amazing comeback tool, racking up some serious damage. I don't recommend using this move raw by itself, it should always be comboed in to confirm an attack. But there are moments where your opponent may be too aggressive, and you can sometimes catch them off guard with a wake up fatal blow for massive damage and also piss them off. And that wraps it up for what I think is the best special moves loadout for Sub-Zero. Now we're going to move on to the first tournament and ranked legal variation, Dead Winter. In this variation, you only have two special moves and that is Ice Ball and Cold Shoulder, which replaces Low Slide. On its own, Ice Ball does not trade with projectiles. However, when you enhance it in this variation, it travels faster and trades with projectiles leading to a freeze. It's a very good option and gives Sub-Zero possibly the best projectile in the game. Cold Shoulder is a pretty cool special move, but it takes away that full screen load that we get from Slide. And in my opinion, it's an inferior option to Slide. The crushing blow for Cold Shoulder also only triggers if you land it as a counter or a punish, whereas Slide can trigger on your third in hand Slide in a match. That alone is more valuable because you can actually load it up in the beginning of a match and hold on to it for either round 2 or close out the game with big damage. Not to mention, Slide's crushing blow actually does 319 damage versus Cold Shoulder that does 267. If you at least got a pop-up to continue the combo, that honestly would make Cold Shoulder pretty good in my opinion. Also in this variation, you can still combo off a of forward 2, because normally Ice Ball won't connect, but if you enhance it now, it can actually freeze the opponent mid-combo. Still giving you a 50-50 option, but not as high damage in compared to Rising Ice and Ground Freeze. Honestly, you lose out on a lot of damage in this variation. Losing Slide's Crushing Blow is pretty huge in my opinion. Moving on to the next tournament loadout, Thin Ice. This variation has more damage output than the last one because Slide actually makes a return and the Crushing Blow again can help us get way more damage out than Cold Shoulder. This variation is actually more focused on a zoning gameplay and spacing your opponents. Now I say that because they actually give us three special moves that are straight up projectiles. Polar Axe in the air is actually my favorite of the three and I gotta see more use out of it from annoying your opponents from the air or getting chip damage out at the end of the game. Bridget Storm actually has a decent amount of startup, but it actually travels full screen to knock down your opponent. It does not freeze your opponent, however, so its main use is for zoning and just getting damage. Desticle Barrage actually has the longest startup with Sub-Zero taking a step back to make it sort of safe. It also does not have much range. It's mainly to be used mid-screen and block strings because chip damage that it does is pretty high. On hit, it actually does lingering damage over time when the icicles actually break off your opponent. Chip damage aside, I don't really see the usefulness of this move or the variation in my opinion. That's why I think ranked Sub-Zero at the moment is just a modest mid-tier character with limited damage output and setups. Now that's not to say he isn't usable, but I just think other characters have more interesting tournament loadouts than him at the moment. And that wraps it up for my Sub-Zero guide guys. Let me know in the comments below if you agree with me on his tournament loadouts and also let me know if you do not. In the future, I'd like to see custom moves allowed in tournaments and ranked, but I'm sure NRS is worried about the balancing of certain characters, which is understandable. I'm just glad casual match is a thing and personally has been a preferred mode for me because I like to rematch my opponents multiple times and try to understand the matchups. And I feel like it just makes me a better player overall. I'm sorry that this video took so long, but sometimes it takes me a bit to grasp the character and understand them before I'm actually comfortable with making a guide. So I hope this video's format was a little bit easier to follow. Let me know in the comments of any tips that you guys would recommend on improving the video's format because I'm always open to constructive criticism and I just want to make good videos for you guys to understand and get better. Up next is actually Katana because of a subscriber request and then following her is Frost. After that, any characters up for grabs, so be sure to comment below on who you guys would like to see next. And if you see that character already mentioned in the comments, be sure to like it so that the top one can be seen and I'll make a video on them. 
Coming soon, we actually got combo videos and online matches for various characters, so you won't want to miss that. Let me know in the comments who is actually your favorite character right now to play and what are your favorite moves for them. Be sure to like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you're new. More Mortal Kombat videos will be coming out soon. My name is Blitz and thanks for watching.